From AI voices to medieval sci-fi worlds, this game has made some pretty unique gameplay decisions. It was developed by a single person though, so I went in with some pretty low expectations, but this game has genuinely surprised me, especially with the world building, so let's start there. First off, the storyline in Stellar Plans is pretty complex. There's a lot happening on this planet ravaged by war, and it's hard to keep track of all the different plot points, so I'm not even going to pretend like I grasped half of it. At the start, you are a prisoner of war, woken up in your cell by this lovable robot named Robbie 3. You'll be seeing a lot of him because he's basically your sidekick throughout your adventures, giving you tips and mission commentary. He brings you your first weapon that you promptly use to fight your way out of the tutorial. A tutorial that appropriately feels like a medieval fantasy prison. Once you make it out, you can begin your adventures in typical RPG fashion like exploring the environment and managing your stats. Remember, this is an RPG, so there are attribute points, but let's talk about that with the mechanics. Now, the attribute point system lets you divvy points out to different stats to match your playstyle. If you want to deal more damage, you dump your points into power. If you want to be able to take more damage, you dump those points into health. It's pretty straightforward and gives you some flexibility when working towards your own approach to this adventure. But speaking of flexibility, this game's equipment and weapon management system is really nice. From the gear to the guns, it's all simple and it all makes sense. Weapons and equipments can be stored on your hips, but you also have shoulder slots. I don't remember the game telling me about these shoulder slots, I just tried it and it worked. But the main thing you'll be putting in these slots is your weapons, and weapons have attachments you can find throughout your adventures. I want to take a second to applaud the way attachments work here. Different weapons have different attach points that act pretty much like magnets. You put an attachment near an area to clip it on, and removing it is as simple as grabbing the attachment and yanking it off. I have seen more immersive ways of putting attachments on from other games, but if I'm being honest, I like this method just as much. And the equipment in this game shares this intuitive mechanic, with each equipment having their own stats and granting passive bonuses. You put them on and take them off simply by reaching for where they are and yanking them off of you. A simple yet realistic design that I personally really like. Then there's the way dialogue selections are made. You can either use the controller to make your dialogue selection or head gestures like nodding and shaking to select an option. It's too bad that this is not as responsive as I'd like it to be, which is actually the case for many of the mechanics in this game. But speaking of things that could use some improvements, the enemy AI is different. Metaphorically speaking, the AI in this game is one of the dullest tools in the shed, but weirdly enough, this adds to immersion. These are alien beast creatures with primitive weapons getting shot at, so it makes sense that their reaction to an unexpected threat is to charge at it since they're supposed to be warriors. By that logic though, their ridiculous detection mechanics also make sense. The enemies here tend to rush at you full speed in large groups before you can even see them. And as you could guess, this makes for some pretty awkward and intense fights, especially when your suppressed weapon is essentially made useless by this fact. It's as if the enemy can smell or hear your footsteps before you even know where they are. The icing on the cake with the enemies in this game is that they just materialize out of nowhere, behind you, all the time. When you combine that with the earlier mentioned problems and the enemy's godlike accuracy, the awkwardness of combat becomes obvious. This game does have mech suits though. Large and intimidating armors that look like this game's version of Gundam suits can be found flying around. You can even pilot them, though they function more like giant outfits with their own health pool, which is a little bit of a letdown. At least, that was the case with my experience. They still give off a pretty sick vibe though, at least when you factor out how they actually look. Uh, let's talk about that. From a distance, the mech suits look pretty wild, but up close, don't get your hopes up. The graphics in Stellar Plans are quite low, but considering it's a one-person project, my expectations weren't high to begin with. It's understandable that these graphics aren't as polished as some bigger games. Some odd things I noticed include blood splatter and lighting anomalies. Instead of hitting the ground, blood seems to float or stick in the air. It's kind of bizarre and definitely takes you out of the moment when you just see it hanging there. And this is especially true when there's a lot of it after mowing down beasts that are charging at you. Then there's this lighting glitch that was noticeable enough to grab my attention mid-dialogue. 
it was like this lingering artifact effect that moved wherever there was light. In general, this game is very buggy and there are a lot of these small problems, but they're more annoying than game breaking, so just be aware of that. For all this game's visual shortcomings though, it still manages to create an interesting world. And speaking of interesting, let's talk about audio. Right from the start, you have the option to enable or disable AI voices for dialogue. And while I'm not a fan of generic AI voiceovers in general, I do appreciate that there is voice dialogue here at all. Hey, buddy, looks like you could use some help. I'm Robbio Free from the Stellar Plans. They sent me to rescue you. Remember, this game is being developed by one person, not an entire team, and it would have been so easy not to include voices at all. I think the developer made the right call here since I'd rather listen to AI than read silent walls of dialogue, and this game has a lot of dialogue. Now they sound pretty generic and flat, but the good news is that they are varied with noticeable differences from character to character. This is the war zone center. No one from the third war zone can pass through here unless there's a special circumstance. This variety noticeably helps with making the characters feel more distinct even if the voices themselves aren't making you feel anything. This definitely beats everyone sounding exactly the same. Other than that though, the sound effects and background music aren't bad. It all fits the atmosphere of this game nicely. It's not going to blow your mind, but it works. Well, the background music might actually blow your mind, or at least your eardrums if you don't turn it down. The default options had the background music way too loud for me, but this was an easy fix. And since we're on the topic of options, I won't bore you with the extra details, but just know that if you get motion sickness in VR, this game does what it can to help you with that. Stellar Plans includes all of your standard necessities. You have vignettes to blur the edges of your screen, teleportation if you don't have your VR legs, and camera rotation speed controls. These options are pretty much essential for a comfortable VR experience and you have them all here. You also have a pretty fleshed out graphics menu, but don't expect this to change anything given how low the graphical ceiling of this game is. Now, this game does have a standout spectator camera, giving you multiple options for it. You don't often see this at all, let alone with multiple options, so kudos there. And lastly, you have full control over your volume levels and multi-language support. All in all, a solid amount of options here, and if you're used to watching my videos, you know what comes next. If you're wondering how this game stacks up to other modern VR titles, I've got you covered. The theme earns a 4 out of 6 because it does a great job mixing primitive and sci-fi content in a way that feels believable. The bugs can make the story hard to follow, but the theme itself is pretty solid. Mechanics gets a 2 out of 6 because the bugs in this game are most obvious when it comes to the mechanics. For the most part, this game has some immersive approaches to gameplay, but most of them are plagued with bugs that aren't game breaking but are definitely annoying. The visuals squeak by with a 1 out of 6 because the textures aren't here to impress. Blood doesn't blood right and the lights don't always light correctly. Audio gets a 2 out of 6. The noticeable lack of audio in places where there should be audio, like doors breaking down, can create an awkward experience. The monotone AI doesn't hurt the score here, but it doesn't help it either. And lastly, Options gets a 4 out of 6. It has all of your standard stuff to reduce motion sickness. The fact that attributes and talents are in the options menu and not a menu of their own was a bit of a head scratcher though. That said, when I first tried this game, I didn't know what to expect because there wasn't much dissectable information on the gameplay. Even with the crazy amount of bugs though, I had a lot of fun trying this one out. This game has earned a nice down the middle immersion score of 3 out of 6. Some games feel like a waste of your time and money, but this is not one of them, especially at the low price of 7 US dollars. If the developer is watching this, this game is an excellent show of effort. Keep up the good work and maybe consider starting a small studio because whatever it is, you've got it. And hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like and sub before you check out the next one. But until next time, stay immersed.